Camera ready. ready. Going. Oh, crap. We have the roll call. Okay. Director Bennett. Okay. Here. Director Muller. Here. Director Loman. Here. <laughs> Director Boyd. Present. Director Moran. Present. Director Harvey. Here. We have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the regular meeting of the Sewer Authority Mid-Coast Mid Side for February 23rd. And we have a speaker, and that will be for the other item. Um, is there any public comment on any items that are not on the agenda tonight? I see none. Uh, any comments from the board or anything before we take off? We are ready to roll. Um, on the consent agenda, does anybody want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Leonard? Uh, no, I'm having computer issues. Is that karma or what? Uh, my karma ran over your desk. Uh, is that a no? You're not going to pull anything or you don't know? Um, my recollection is I have nothing to hold from the consent agenda. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? No. The House is 8 0. Okay, we're on to item four old business. This is the update on the recycled water ad hoc committee meeting of February 12th. I wasn't there. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> did, why don't you start and I'll, I'll um, pitch in. We uh, uh, met briefly to, to discuss uh, what the appropriate next steps would uh, be in, in, in pursuit of uh, uh, moving the, the entire project forward. And so we had some, some discussions about uh, Things like uh, next steps in, in uh, getting some legal documents drafted up uh, and, and, uh, and setting aside some source of funding to begin uh, uh, working towards uh, actually making the, the goals a reality. And with that, I'll, I'll hand okay. it back to you if you want to. So, um, our general manager provided us, uh, well, we were only able to have uh, myself and uh, Rick Kowalczyk there. Uh, Granada was un unfortunately unavailable. Him, but we decided to go ahead and keep things moving a little bit. So our general manager provided uh, some background documents. We identified a few more that we want to pull together, uh, things from our 2008-2009 uh, efforts. Um, in particular, the, the site map that we had for the plan, which really amounts to, it's very simple, but it just helps people visualize it. It's over here, uh, kind of sandwiched between uh, a couple of the tanks, there's a little kind of cutout area that's just big enough to hold a couple of boxes like the one that we had before. And that would be well sighted to then get something with a very short reach over to the fence where CCWD can take it from there across the creek over to where Ocean Telling Partners has their uh, wells and pumps. <coughs> but we have a site plan for that and it's it's descriptive but it's simple. But that's the kind of document that we want to be sure to pull up because we've got a lot of that work already done. We don't have to cover that same ground again. I have a question about that. Yeah, let, let me get on through this and then we'll get to some questions. Um, so we left it with a few things to do to pull together some of those documents and um, one of the things the committee wants to do is bring back a, a request that we allocate a little bit of budget. Um, each of the each of the groups that's going to be involved in this is going to need a little skin in the game just to get things going and the kind of budget we're anticipating is uh, a little bit of money for um, the anticipated work from our lawyers to help you know, start to situate things into something negotiable that we can all get signed on to. And we're anticipating basically uh, an agreement between us and CCWD because they're going to be the 
purchaser of the wholesale water. <clears throat> and then a, something between them and their buyer, which we anticipate to be OCP. Um, so at least those two contracts, and then uh, we identified a third, which may be necessary, since the land that is between our fence and their wells, uh, a lot of that land is owned by the city, we believe. We believe the city may need to be party to that with CCWD as well. So um, we discussed that a little bit, but we've got a little bit of homework to do on that to, to get together what's going to amount to, here's what we're anticipating, can we get some money in the kitty to get a little skin in the game on this and uh, get some forward progress on this. Um, so finish collecting the documents that we have on the engineering that's already been done and start you know, bringing back something tangible so we can ask for something to keep this thing moving. Staff time, uh, we weren't clear that we needed to make a formal request for a staff time allocation on this. I think the, the direction of the board is probably adequate for that. Um, Rob, did I that leave was, anything out? That was pretty comprehensive. Not uh, bad for an 8 a.m. meeting. Uh, uh, just lasted an hour. But, uh, um, I have, you have a copy of the, of the folder of materials that you gave. Correct. Uh, so the Granada committee members should have, have their copy of that. It's a lot yeah, of That would be great. And both of you have seen all of this stuff before. Okay. This is just a collection of stuff. I had a pile of home. I right. And this is, this is like this much stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's more of that thing that needs to be in there. Um, but uh, for those of us who were here and saw all this stuff and touched it all, it's easy to say, hey, Rob, there's a few more pieces. And we'll identify those and make sure that those are in there as well. Do you have a comment on it? I, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Scott, you had talked about uh, space for two of those units that we tried before. But if, if I recall, each one of those did a uh, maximum capacity of like 35,000 gallons a day. It all depends on the process train that's, that's built inside the box. But if, 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 we, if we wanted, uh, you know, five or 10 years from now to be doing a million gallons a day, where are we gonna put it? Well, we do have more space, but that's, some of it is, well, first off, we don't contemplate a project right now that would have anything to do with a million gallons a day. I thought we were talking some six-digit number, like 500 or 750 or something. The number from Bruce was, I think it was, I'm, I'm fuzzy on this, I think it was like six hundred. So that's one customer. That's right. But it's also the one customer who has identified uh, any, <clears throat> any kind of way to be able to financially Right now, that one customer is the only reason that we're able to really conceive of doing this because he's talking about financing an amount that would allow him to pay in in our costs what would be debt service plus operational expense, right? No one else is talking to us about coughing up the kind of money it takes to do that. And we're talking about a half a million dollars a year, right? So there might be others who might be able to benefit with marginal increases, but before we talk about anything where we contemplate, you know, significant upsizing of this thing, we need to identify who that client would be. And part of how we do that is we show that we can get phase one done. Sure, that, that makes sense. And then if yeah. maybe one of the larger commercial farms says, hey, this would be a thing that, that they'd really like to get into, it's easier for them to sell it as a financeable activity because we've already demonstrated the ability to do it and deliver it. So. <clears throat> I, I think we all know that getting phase one done is the only way we're going to get to any subsequent phases. If we get to where we need to do uh, you know, greater volume, we might tack on more boxes, or we might redo the boxes we have to be able to handle greater capacity, or we might go to a different technology altogether. But I, I, for I, phase one, it's pretty clear that, that uh, we don't need to go you know, too far afield exploring new things, because we've already done the pilot on something that will get us there. Yeah, and I, I don't uh, disagree with anything you said. My concern basically is that we try and avoid uh, a startup scenario that would cause the unit cost to be higher for an increment further down the road. Well, and this is why we've talked Clear specifically back. about the, the modular approach, so, so we don't get stuck there. There is going to be potentially some increment that 
makes sense. So like one more, you know, if we took, for example, the pilot box that we had, you could always just stick another one on there and boom, instantly yeah. double your quantity or two more boxes and you can triple it. Here, right, we, if, we, if we run out of space, then the next one. I would like to make sure. To well, you remember, it, I've been I've been saying for some time that I want to make sure that what we do contemplates reasonably achievable next increments. So if we need 600,000 gallons a day, why don't we get something that doesn't have to run full tilt to make that 600? Let's get something that can do I don't know seven or 800 a day. Uh, well, there there would be there would be some some cost to Sam to buy that kind of uh, additional capacity that somebody's not willing to pay for, but if the marginal cost on that fits within some scenario where we think we can get other buyers, or we find some be beneficial reason for Sam to do it, um, it might be that, I mean, long term, and we've talked about this a good bit, we've got an outfall that puts all of the water we treat out into the ocean. One of these days, if we have to finance uh, the emergency reconstruction of that, it could be $30 million. It might make sense for us to start exploring ways to find other ways to get, you know, to dispose of the water that we treat rather than putting it into the ocean. And right now we've got one buyer that we've identified. Uh, I would like to, I'd like for us to consider, are there ways for us to find uh, other things to do with it, you know, below cost, to some, to some parties, for example, to other government agencies, for, perhaps, or uh, subsurface um, release into kind of reverse leach fields that might then be able to let cattails and soil and such clean it up in a final pass and let it feed into a creek that right now doesn't have enough flow, but it, so it doesn't even, the mouth doesn't even reach the ocean. In, in Southern California, there's actually some groundwater replenishment agency sure. that well, takes we need to okay, wrap so this up on the committee yeah, report. Do we have a next step here? Uh, uh, next step is the committee will bring... I'm still confused about one thing, though. You, We're not designing the project. Yeah. Not, we don't want uh, to do that. So. But you said Bruce is interested in potentially up to 600,000 gallons. I've been working from a very fuzzy memory on that. I have the detailed notes, but I mean, we would basically I thought, I thought. Si we would size it to what he's able to buy, and I would argue for sizing up a little bit so we can have some headroom. Okay, but I thought the one box had a capacity that's only a small fraction of that. I started with it depends on the process train that you build into the box. The box is simply a container. The equipment that you put in it is something that you design for the purpose that you're trying to achieve. So if you need a greater volume, you design something different to put inside the box. Okay. So next up is the committee uh, has some uh, have some words to draft, put mm -hmm. together, which amounts to something that we can bring back to the board and make mm -hmm. sure that we are all on the same page. So then we can go start talking to CCWD about moving on to the, the next phase. Okay. Do we have a date for the next meeting proposed yet? I we were, were hoping we were hoping to hit this meeting, and I, okay. I'm going to say next week. So, so, uh, so next week, we might no, have. next meeting. Oh, okay. But we want to bring something back for next month. All right. Now, with the drought um, situation, I, I think that um, the uh, this is something that we, we um, you know, I think that we, uh, phase one is a contract with CCWD, and um, I, I think it's, uh, I think that we should, uh, I think it should be moved along uh, the best we can. I don't want to rush it, but I, I but to have a meeting for next month. Um, I, I think that I think that um, if you have projects to do or things that you have to get done, I would like to see those done in a timely fashion and uh, this uh, moved along um, at a regular pace. Um, I think that it's a, it's an important thing for the community and. Uh, uh, for, for the co-side, and I, I think that um, I'd like, like to see it uh, not hurried, but I, I, I'd like to see uh, the contract negotiations, sort of the contract discussion with CCWD begin, not after a few more months, but begin uh, you know, in a timely fashion. I, I, think it, I think that recycling water is important for Sam, for the whole community. Well, and I completely under, agree, and that's yeah. the only thing that's getting me out of bed for 8 o'clock meetings. So. And also under new business, we're going to be doing one of the steps, which right. is to start updating yeah. the documents, too. So we'll get that going, too. So. Yeah. 
Any further comments? The note belongs to the resolution that got stuck next to you. Yes. Um, maybe Debbie, I'll pass this to you for Alabama's signature. I don't, I'm not skipping you, John, but yeah. Okay, we're on to new business. Um, this is item A, which is discussed in possible action on formation of an ad hoc committee to discuss issues concerning the SAM parcel and the Kehoe watercourse easement. Uh, we have two speakers from this for this item, but uh, if you want to make a comments first. As a, as a brief recap of, of uh, how we got here, uh, there's been some uh, outreach work done by the city of Half Moon Bay uh, towards the, uh, the residents that uh, have uh, parcels that abut, abut the uh, Kehoe uh, watercourse uh, back over here. Uh, and a lot of the interest uh, centers around uh, ways to mitigate erosion. And obviously, Sam is the primary player as we own the land. And any 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 uh, manipulation of that uh, water course waterway is going to affect uh, Sam as the primary property owner. And so, the after uh, uh, attending a, a few meetings with uh, Half Moon Bay staff and uh, attending the uh, Kehoe uh, water course uh, meeting uh, number two meeting with the landowners uh, held by the city and their consultants. I believe the best way to facilitate the uh, interaction between the uh, uh, city uh, planning staff of the city of Half Moon Bay and Sam is to set up a, uh, an ad hoc committee uh, so that, to re to, that there's a representation as uh, Sam's interests and we can begin to begin the process of uh, involving ourselves in that discussion. And so towards that end, I'm uh, requesting that the, the board uh, appoint an ad hoc committee to deal with the uh, to assist me in dealing with the uh, city of Half Moon Bay regarding the uh, future of the Kehoe water course and the sand parcel. Okay. Um, before we vote and or ask for volunteers, why don't we have our two speakers. Uh, first speaker is Jimmy Benjamin. Uh, good evening, directors uh, and friends. My name is Jimmy Benjamin. I live at 400 Pillar Seacoast Avenue. Uh, I'm the neighbor who lives just on the other side of the Kehoe water course, and it's nice to see all of you. Congratulations on your uh, appointment uh, to the president mm -hmm. and to the vice chair. Um, just a, a couple of comments on this. Uh, I did not attend the meeting in January. I was out of state. Um, but I watched it, and there was a discussion of this item. I was left with the impression that there was going to be a presentation um, by the city on uh, the project and an opportunity for the uh, for the board to comment, and I'm, I'm hoping that the fact that this has changed uh, is an indication that there is some design effort that's going on that I'm uh, unaware of. I haven't heard much about that since the meeting, but I'm hopeful that that's the case. Um, I also uh, stand ready to uh, familiarize any of the members of the ad hoc committee or other members of the board with the issues that surround this, and uh, would welcome the chance to work with you, not just on the erosion issue, that your general manager mentioned, but the other issues that are of concern to the community, and that would be the risk of flooding, since the stream is supposed to be able to handle uh, enough, it needs to handle a substantial storm. The old estimates that are probably considered low now for a 25 year storm are 500 cubic feet per second. And the city's engineer has said that the existing drainage would hold maybe 100, give or take. So, um, and obviously a flood concern for neighbors upstream from Sam should portend a concern about flooding for Sam as well. Uh, the berm that sits between our properties is another, uh, it's completely made of soil, so the erosion risks that we feel are also the erosion risks that should concern Sam. And I appreciate Sam's uh, awareness of the, uh, of the concerns of the neighbors and look forward to working with you as neighbors to resolve this in whatever fashion you think is best for us to work together. So thank you again for your time. Thank you, Jimmy. Second speaker is Mike Ferreira. Thank you, uh, Chair Lemon. Um, it was almost 10 years ago that the city council thought it gave instructions to staff for uh, constructing a bypass solution that would take floodwaters above a certain level and put it into a pipe that would 
of course, go to the south and through the Landstrip property and then rejoin the water course beyond the homes. Uh, that would have also involved, I think, I forget the word, Gambian, Gabian wall to shore up some areas that were in danger of erosion, et cetera. And uh, I don't know where that plan went, but I guess there's still discussions nine years later about something similar to that. And uh, I would uh, just hope that, uh, I would be very curious to see what prospective plans are right now, whether it's for a pipe or whether you're talking about doing yet another ditch. I think a pipe would make more sense from a physical standpoint because you would have to have some kind of a diversion structure that would take water above a certain flow line into a pipe rather in, than into a ditch. So um, it is a bit odd to see a committee to deal with the city when the city is half the board. But uh, so one would think that just uh, functionally, that's just a little hard to figure out how that works. That you would have Half Moon Bay negotiating with Half Moon Bay, or whatever. Uh, at any rate, uh, I think the problem's been around long enough that uh, I'm pleased that at least you want to be helping in the solution. Thank you. There seem to sort of be two parts of this. One is. Um, do we want to have a committee to go meet with the Half Moon Bay people? And second, or indirectly, the uh, presentation possibility of do we want a, a, a full presentation here with all the discussion of all the options and things like that? Um, comments, Debbie? Yeah, I think it's premature to form an ad hoc committee. I think this is something where we would um, benefit by having um, the staff of the SAM plan, perhaps, you know, Rob and uh, our attorney meet with the, the city staff and um, identify all the issues surrounding the use of this property for these purposes, you know, legal and otherwise. I mean, we're not sanitary engineers or attorneys ourselves, so why not have them draft a, uh, work together to draft a technical memorandum first, identify all the issues, and, um, you know, bring that back to us for review. And um, perhaps that includes the, the existing scenarios that have been developed. Um, but give us a chance to review, you know, data first, issues first, and then perhaps appoint a committee to meet with city staff and the residents. But I think it's more appropriate for our staff to, to weigh in first on you know, the universe of issues surrounding the use of this property. I have a comment, Jerry. Yeah, I'd like to just uh, uh, follow up a little bit with that, too. I think uh, it's a little premature, as, as uh, Vice Chair has stated. Um, you've got to be really careful that we have to remind ourselves that we are policy. We're not operations yet uh, out there involved in this. Uh, when you're relocating waterways, it's a very complicated, very expensive, and a very time-consuming project out there. So it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, at the regional board right now, we have a, a committee that's trying to relocate a waterway and it's in its fifth year. So it, it does take time. And I, I think it's, you know, we do such a great job with collections, transportate, transmissions, and uh, uh, treatment that we ought to stick with that at the moment. It's going to come back to this board without a doubt because you're the key player in the property involved. So it's not like it's going to be uh, uh, <clears throat> not brought back to some board at mm -hmm. some time. So I feel at this time it would be better that we get some more definite information um, from the main party involved and then bring it back to the same board. That's my feeling at this time. Um, real quick, um, what is the timing that you folks know about this? Um, for instance, in El Granada, my, my concern would be 
I would like either somebody there, staff or committee or somebody, as we're starting to develop options, because most of them utilize our property, like they did in El Granada, the people designed all these amazing things and nobody asked the Granada Sanitary District if they wanted to use their land or not. So I'd like to see some input from us somehow in the process, however that goes. I don't know the, the timing, whether they're still developing options. I would like you know someone involved in the process before the point gets to here are three options, locked in concrete, this is all we're going to talk about, boom, choose one of those three. Funny? Um, well, I have some comments which are pretty much on point to what you just said. Um, the city's consultants went out and they, they started looking at four different options. Some of this is in the packet. I, I sort of skipped over those pages because I was at the, the neighbor's meeting where that was, it looks like that was the presentation materials from the neighbor's meeting. But they, they summarily tossed two of the four options for reasons, <clears throat> for reasons that I didn't pay enough attention to. And then they picked uh, one of the two remaining options, which all of the neighbors are against, and which is going to be a real tough sell to this board. And so I disagree with um, Director Muller's comments that we need to be involved earlier in the design because if they focus in on one design and bring back their one design to this board and it tanks here, which it will, um, then they've wasted a lot of effort. They, they have to be working with this board um, uh, as they pick the project. Well, I, um, I, I concur with you. I, I don't see the point of the city proceeding and selecting an alternative, you know, without Sam's weighing in. So, but I think we need to understand, you know, the issues surrounding the use of this property for this purpose. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to defer on the committee, you know, to defer to the half of the Bay representatives if, if they don't think we should have the committee now, but I just want to make sure that everybody understands that the board has to be more involved up front in which project they do. Um, the, the one that the city consultants picked is basically leaving the water course, and by the way, Mike, we don't call it a ditch anymore. Um, uh, le the, the, the one that the, the city consultants picked is leaving the water course where it is and putting in, a, um, uh, I don't remember the word for it, but basically armoring it. Okay, well, let's not discuss all the options and, here right now. You know, for, for me, that's a non starter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've both spoken to my point, but you know. I, uh, I guess I have a question uh, to Rob and the staff. Would, you know, I think that a committee would be, would, would, might be a good idea now for all the reasons that both of you gave, but would, would it be helpful to staff to have that committee to, to you know, to, have, to be formed now and, um, and uh, work with you and, uh, <clears throat> and meet and uh, help you with this project? Would that be helpful? I, to, a, to a certain extent, I do agree that perhaps an ad hoc committee might be a little bit premature, but what I am looking at a way is to facilitate communication between staff, and if, if, that, if, if it's the board's preference, that facilitator at this point be pretty much through myself and our staff interacting with them and then acting as a conduit to a greater board, we can do that. But I wanted to float the, the option out there that if, if we wanted to get more hands-on if the time was right, that the, the, an ad hoc committee would be one possible way to do it. Well, so my, my, my uh, impression from de discussing uh, 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 this project with the City of Half Moon Bay uh, staff is that there's a lot of steps that have to go through this before this comes anywhere near a reality. And so I don't think that it's uh, uh, necessarily a time-sensitive issue, but what I do want to do is, is it, it, the degree we can is to facilitate communication so that we don't have any more uh, miscues with uh, who's being re reached out to first. And if that ends up being th through my staff and myself, that's fine. But I just wanted to put this out there as it would it be a preferred option for the board at this point to have some kind of a direct input in this, or, or would you prefer that I continue and then just keep the board informed at this point until something changes well, uh, materially? Well, with, that, with, that, with that comment, I, I would suggest that we form the, the, the ad hoc committee now um, and, um, and begin, uh, as Leonard said, 
as Rob just mentioned too, be, be, be part of this uh, from, from, the, from the very beginning. I don't see any harm in having the committee meet or, or to be formed at this point. Well, I was going to volunteer to be on the committee, but you know, it, again, if, if the city reps think that the committee is premature, then uh, I don't want to push back against that. Would it be um, if maybe we could um, keep this on the agenda, like we've done in several items, pun it until next month and see what kind of progress you have. If you want to start the process, okay. start communication, and then as things heat up and then we actually start you know, designing options, then that might be a good time to get more people involved. Now, the, the one thing though is can, can you make sure that, that all of the directors here are notified of any of the neighbors meetings because you know, I did go to the last one and it was pretty short notice. Yeah, I, that's a little loosey goosey for me. I don't know about John, but I think it would be preferable for us to direct um, legal counsel and the GM to prepare to work with the city on getting enough information, looking at your own documents, and preparing a technical memorandum that you could bring back to us to see all the issues. So, not just a report back, here's what we did, but an actual legal memorandum analysis of the, the universe of issues that involve the use of this property. So that we can, you know, look at alternatives clear-eyed um, and make some rational decisions. You know, instead of injecting ourselves into the process before we've taken those steps. But one, one, you know, hold on. Uh, sorry, uh, so, you know, that, that's great. That's fine. Except to, to refer to Mike's point, Mike Farrar's point. You know, so you, so you, you are the city um, talking to the city with the, with, with the, the, uh, the with Sam to, to, to form an ad hoc committee to be someone else on involved at this point besides the city talking to the city so that's why it would be good to have a, a non-city member of Sam or a couple of non-city members of Sam be involved instead of having the city talk to the city well there may be time for that but I think we need information first data first if I could, um, uh, I've been waiting. Um, <clears throat> Leonard, I've been waiting. This is kind of the point I made at the last meeting. Um, I was rather surprised at the last meeting, but there was nothing in the way of materials, handouts, presentations, slides, or even answers to any questions at all about the nature of what was being contemplated. Nor was there. Uh, even after we asked specifically, nor was there any acquiescence from city staff that uh, this agency and its board members would be notified, much less invited to attend meetings. Uh, I'm glad that, that the next uh, community meeting we did get word of, like about a day and a half before. I couldn't make because Thursday nights, as you know, <clears throat> first and third Thursdays are Montero board meetings. Um, but there's a, a decided paucity of information here, but we are now, uh, to Rick's question, he asked about timeline on this. Uh, the first meeting was held in 2014, we're into 2015. There's a timeline in the packet that shows design starts mid-second quarter on the calendar, and construction starts uh, second quarter of 2018. So there's a timeline here with a bunch of steps on it, and not one of them in what I'm looking at tonight says anything about Sam. Well, first of all, uh, the city manager and Dante Hall, the community development director, reported to us that they only came to the meeting to listen. They were not invited to give a presentation, you know, PowerPoint which, or which show meeting? slides. That, that, may be the, that may be the case, but yeah. it, so. we, we, we had some questions, mm -hmm. and nothing was offered, and there was no... The, the, you know, people come to my board, and if somebody's complaining that we haven't been in the loop and can we be in the loop, it is it is incumbent upon us to say, we're going to keep you in the loop. And that it comes at no cost. It's inexpensive. And it's part of establishing good relationships and trying yeah. to establish some goodwill. I don't and think I, we need a lecture on that. Thank you. Well, yeah. I, I represent a community. I've been elected to do this. and. Um, you know, as, as part landowner for land that is the subject land, uh, where someone is contemplating a project on land that we own and oversee, set the policy for, um, 
that someone would be having meetings in the community without involving us uh, is not only odd, it's unseemly. I think we all can agree that that was a misstep. Uh, but that I think there are some very easy, easy mitigations for those kind of missteps, and we haven't seen them yet. So I'm not comfortable with the notion that staff to staff is really going to be the thing that's going to get us there when we still haven't seen a single step on the part of the city who's driving the project. Uh, to, to do the kinds of things that would actually show that there's going to be active engagement and uh, the opportunity for mutual respect and, and cooperation in this project. Okay, but we all, we're coming, we sort of have two options for talking here, and we need to come to a conclusion here on this. One is to gather some more information on the options that are being discussed, and then form a committee to actively participate in those discussions, or do we need to form the committee now and you know have that committee work, you know, attend all the meetings and give input to half of the day and all the planning from day one. So if we have, if, if we have be, two votes or do we do one now and then follow up with another one. If it's going to be staff to staff, I would like to have part of the work product there be proposed steps for involving Sam in uh, guiding the policy on which project might actually be contemplated for our property. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a reasonable request. Um, but I would also like to get as much information as we can about what's already known and out there in the community. I think we have some of that in the packet. I'm glad to see that there, but I'd also like to see something that's updated with the current understanding of the next steps. Because the we, next steps that are contemplated in the documentation that we have here don't say Sam yeah. Could we direct Rob to start that process, um, come up with the status of all the options that are currently being discussed, and come up with the plan when Sam will be a first officially involved, and use that as our initial steps to get the thing going? and then talk about the committee at the next meeting when we get a report back from Rob on the options and the plan to get Sam involved. Let me, let me tell you what the problem with that proposal is. They're going to do the same thing that they just did, which is they're going to decide what they want to do and bring it here as a fait accompli, and it's going to tank here. I have to disagree with you on that. That's not the plan we're just suggesting. Thank you. We're suggesting that Rob starts the process right now, identify the options, that currently exist, uh, identify the plan to get us involved at what points, and then that's going to take a while, and then we can see by next month's meeting where we are and what the progress is, what we see in the options, and what has been the conversations with Half Moon Bay and Rob to get Sam involved in the thing. But, 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 let me tell you one of the things that I got from going to that meeting that you are not going to see in a staff report. All of the neighbors were against the specific project. Which that, alternative were you talking about? Three um, or four? I don't remember the numbers. And, they were and, against three. And, and, the, the, and the that's not that, an issue. I, I'm not concerned about that okay, right but, now. But, but what I'm saying is that's, mm -hmm. that's the kind of information you're not going to get from a written staff report, the fact that all the neighbors were against the one that the consultant was But you have that information, so that's a good add Only because I went to the meeting, and so I'm saying okay. I want to make sure we're notified of all future meetings. And I didn't, that hear, is part I didn't of the hear consent to that. I, I would like to specifically request again, both to our general manager and to our friends from Half Moon Bay, that Sam and his directors be notified of, of community meetings. And, and, you know, with these staff to staff interactions, if uh, our GM here and uh, legal counsel don't feel that our staff are being open and transparent or engaging enough for providing the information they need, then let us know about it. I'd be willing to entertain a motion, uh, and so we can vote on this and see where we are on the vote. I would move that we direct staff to meet with the city staff uh, involving uh, the necessary consultants, legal or otherwise, as deemed necessary by the general manager, uh, and bring back to us a set of next steps uh, that would contemplate collaboration with Sam and the city. Can you include Edward 
notified of the meeting and that we're notified of and that we request notification for any community meeting on the subject. I'll second it. I would like to just make clear though, I think what we want in addition are, you know, a discussion of technical issues having to do with the use of that property. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. You know, legal and otherwise. I'm sorry, I should have said that. That's yeah. yeah. And you know, we'll we need this property for future potential SAM uses. I mean, at some point we're going to have to talk about sea level rise and the location of this plant and what we're going to do about its location. So, I mean, that seems to me to be a potential technical issue worthy of discussion. And, and I, would tie, I would tie it in to what we were just talking about with recycled water. If we wanted mm -hmm. to do some subsurface discharge and if we had a waterway that was much more natural where we could feed water in up at the head of the property and let it flow through the property as part of something that's actually built to be handled water and get it cleaned up before it hits the ocean. I would like to make sure that if there's going to be a big project that's going to take years to do, that we don't forego that opportunity exactly. if that's feasible. Right. right. And I, I just want everybody to be clear that, and I think I can speak for John, maybe I'm wrong, but we do want to maintain good open relationships between the city and SAM and, and the board in the city. So we're not interested in hiding information or you know, unnecessarily delaying the process or delaying the involvement of the neighbors. Um, so I want to make good on that commitment to you and that you feel comfortable with that. And if you're not, please let us know. Would you accept her additions about the technology? Absolutely. Yeah. Better. Your second. Uh, I'm not clear on exactly what Say the yes. additions are. It was to make sure that this contemplated, uh, that, that the work from with staff to staff uh, included all the business around technical and legal. Yeah, yeah sure. You said okay. it better than I did. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any, above, any opposed? Abstentions? No. Passed 8 up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you at, at, at some point before the end of the meeting, I, I would like to go back and revisit the minutes because after I got my machine booted the right way, I looked and I see that I had marked something in the minutes. Okay. Uh, moving on to item 5B, uh, discussion and possible action. Authorize manager to expend an amount not to exceed $10,000 on legal and other services in order to draft documents and agreements related to the SAM recycled water project. Rob, Director, so that. one of the outcomes of our the recycled water committee meeting that I previously mentioned was that uh, we needed to have a starting point for uh, getting the legal and other uh, relational documents uh, drawn up to kick this uh, process off. And one of the things that I wanted to do from the outset was identify uh, set up a cost center and some funding so we could begin tracking what the total project cost is from its inception. And since it wasn't uh, anything that was dealt with in the uh, current fiscal budget, I went and looked at where we were at with, with our current legal uh, services budget, and we're significantly under budget to date with that. So what I'm uh, requesting authorization is to allocate uh, $10,000 of the legal services budget specifically towards legal and other work surrounding uh, kicking off the uh, recycled water project. It will, not, there's uh, zero overall impact to the bottom line of the overall SAM budget. We have the funds in place. What I'm looking for is uh, board memorialization and authorization to ask, begin allocating SAM funds towards the pursuit of this project in the amount of $10,000 to get, the, get, the, get it rolling so we can get the documents drafted up between us and CCWD and identify some of the other uh, legal points we may have to uh, address. Is this the um, process you were talking about about the from the Recycled Water Committee meeting? Yes. yes. This is the seed money or Correct. Actors. Right. And we, we did discuss, uh, Rick and I did discuss with Rob what other money we might be contemplating, but okay. what we agreed was that this is necessary and unavoidable if we're going to keep this thing moving. Other things will come later, more engineering work, or you know, as we as we get further down the, the path, more legal expense. But mm -hmm. for now, we think this is a reasonable and necessary. Sure. Is, is this also is this updating any of the engineering studies and documents, anything like that, or is this sort of a, a kitty fund for all the legal expenses we're going to see? I don't have an estimate. If, uh, 
on what it would you know, the cost that it would take to refresh that that study yet, but there's uh, there's nothing I think specific, specifically that would prohibit this. I would uh, this is mostly I looked for a, a site that had the most logical nexus for what I considered the next steps where we were significantly under budget, and this uh, legal services line item was one that dovetailed with that. And uh, philosophically, I don't have any objection with at least using some of that money to begin the, the process of, re, uh, of uh, interacting with uh, engineering company to look at our past study and refresh it. But whether it's, it's adequate to cover that specifically or not, I don't know at this time, though. Okay. Hunter? Um, something that uh, Rob said a couple minutes ago uh, triggers this question. I hope we're going to get reimbursed for all the expenses from five years ago, even though it didn't lead anywhere other than demonstrating that yeah we can do it um, we did spend money on various things back then and I think that all needs to be considered reimbursable when the project is operational I think that's something that we should know what that number is we should have an accounting for it we do have an accounting for it uh, we should pull that together I'm not predisposed at this moment to presume that we would try to put that on on the, the customer for you know, recapturing. I, I think at the time we felt it was something that was worth doing for our community. And I don't I don't want to unnecessarily burden and make more difficult the process to get into phase one. If it's something that's a nominal amount and we can sweep it in, great. But if it's a nominal amount that we could sweep in, it may be also a nominal amount that our community could agree is going going well, in the right direction. We spent like thirty-five thousand dollars. I don't on think rental. it was. A, I don't think it was a lot. Well, the rental I think was like thirty-five thousand plus there were other incidental costs. I agree, and I, I think it was at least that. But uh, let's know it. Let's yeah, talk about it. Right up, let's, not, let's not hamstring a project a priori without because thinking about that. That was a pilot. I mean, I think we Trump. contemplated at the time we would get it back if we managed to get grant money from well, the government. We, well, and we didn't. it wasn't conditioned on that. Is we would get it back when the project is in, is in operation. John? I, I believe it's a new beginning, and, and may I ask staff if, uh, if uh, Mr. Copeland will be able to handle this uh, particular beginning on his own, or will he need to be looking at other professional uh, legal advice? Well, look, I think maybe uh, uh, the director will. I, I think you need to sit down and talk to Rob about this. We really haven't since the committee, he and I have not discussed this, and perhaps the Water District also has some input on this as well. Yeah, I believe it's, it's very complicated when you're getting into the recycle with uh, other agencies, so uh, the, it's a new beginning. I like the beginning. It's a start, but then I think when you're looking at legal costs, it's going to be uh, uh, a, a huge uh, expense for the uh, sample. Agency. Uh, John, were, were you on this board at the time we um, actually got a specialist uh, lawyer? Um, I believe so. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, you yeah. were. Yeah. yeah. I think Mr. Copeland had a firm. Uh, Somebody came over. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a good option to consider. We just got to, like the last discussion we had on the earlier agenda, we, we need to sit down and staff yeah. and kind of brainstorm. I, I, I understand all, all he's asking now is that your your general legal budget is you're, you're running behind your expenses are less than your budget all he's doing is asking for a transfer so that you can uh, what do you call it market well, watch and follow it right track track it it's setting aside a card track. and a, a financial tracking methodology so we can know what this cost from the inception when we start involving staff time I think some of the it's issues are simpler this time because, the, because yeah. we've all had a chance to kind of well on it and come at it a second time and, and some of the contention that was there last time simply isn't there because we've got a much cleaner approach to it. Uh, I'm going to please staff recommendation. Second. Um, further discussion? Do you have any other comments? Fine. Okay. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Jim, I would just need no, out. We're moving things along. Thank you, sir. Okay, moving on to item six, manager's report. With the, unless there's uh, several other questions, there are a few things I'd like to highlight based on some of the um, work. If, if you look at um, within the, 
my report. I have bullet, uh, bullet items on the updates of recent activities, uh, bullets number 11 and 12, uh, research regarding the magnitude of the December 11th rain event, and review of the pump and motor repair costs at Port Hole and Montero Pump Station. Both of those um, items came out of some of the discussions we had at the last uh, last board meeting. And the first thing I wanted to call attention to is um, we got some uh, NOAA data back based on that storm. And uh, there, uh, the way they rank storms for severity is based on a peak hour, peak year, uh, or peak hour, peak day methodology, and uh, or peak year, and depending on where that rain, the Sam measured the rain, being Montera, uh, Portola, or Half Moon Bay, that storm was very close to a 10-year, 24-hour to a 25-year, 24-hour event, depending on where you were at, which. Uh, I guess it goes a long way to send, you know, at least giving us a little more data as far as pr proof of concept for the wet weather flow management project. I believe that was designed for a six hour, uh, five year peak event. I'm going to have to go through and find other data, but it, uh, in, in any case, it proved itself very valuable. Now, when I got to digging into some of the data related uh, to that, one of the other questions that had come up at the last meeting was uh, some of the uh, anomalies with the, the member agency's flows during that event. And so I, what I did is I took five years of our flow data and I spread them out and I have a chart that shows, or two charts in the back of my report that show some of the data. And I broke the rainfall out from the member agency flows because what it did is it cluttered up and it, uh, the, the, the data so much that it was kind of hard to interpret because I couldn't expand the scale to make it uh, reflect what I was trying to trying to point out. And when you look at the uh, chart with the three member agencies flows up at the top, it says uh, Half Moon Bay AM flow, GS, GCSD AM, that's the average monthly flow, Montero, uh, average monthly flow. The one thing that stands out there is for the first time in that five year period was the first time that uh, Montero had a, a peak flow, uh, average monthly flow that was over uh, what Granada normally contributes, and so I started digging into that. And I try, what I'm trying to determine is, is it I and I, or what are there other, you know, or it could be a combination of increased I and I. But one thing that when I plotted out the uh, rainfall rates by uh, by a member agency, and I put that on a separate graph, you can see there is a there is a very significant difference in recorded rainfall between Montera and uh, Granada. And so I'm not 100% surprised that the, for the first time this chart reflects a significant Montero contribution. You got five inches of rain in a 24 hour period mm -hmm. in a mountainous region mm -hmm. on dry soil that probably ran off quite a bit pretty and, quickly. And you have to look at the topology of Granada, which is, uh, as, as our GM referred to it as a bowl, he said it's a, a, a sewer manager's dream system. <laughs> and so we have to get a lot of rain before the ground is that saturated. So, so in, in, interesting, well, one of the things that the data pointed out is that Half Moon Bay and Montero managed to pick up more rain than Granada did by some you know, fluke of nature in that event. But anyway, it's, I'm not saying that, the, uh, uh, that there aren't I and I issues anywhere within the system. There, there are, and after watching the, how fast the, the flow rate increased overall, it, it surprised me being more of a desert uh, red, Denzian, I guess. But um, I'm not a, prepared at this point to say 100%. Well, it's it's uh, lack of I and I uh, control things like that. There was a really significant rainfall peak that happened in the north, and probably one of the areas that's going to grab it and try and convey it to the wastewater system as fast as possible, and that may be reflected in some of this data. So I just I wanted to. Uh, uh, present some of this and then I had a question for the uh, board overall is that with this five-year chart that I've got here with the three member agencies flows is that something that you want would you you would like rolled into a, a ongoing like a five-year running at or uh, rolling monthly uh, report this, 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 is, that is, that is, this is page 69 of 97 I think it's <laughs> is that Rob yes that, that's it page 69 page 69 of 97 yeah I think this is what I've been asking for for a few years yeah. yeah, it's just it's, it's five years of data. The raw data is on and is in part of page sixty-seven of ninety-seven, and there's a gap in the rainfall data that from uh, Portola. I think there was an issue for a year there uh, in the past, but that's it's not it's not a hard report to create. Uh, what I wanted to do is create something that wasn't so data cluttered that it was hard to see. 
but gave you some kind of a perspective of what's going on with the agencies over time, if that was something you're interested in. Yeah, I, I would definitely like to see this chart um, in, in, in the monthly packet, okay. um, you know, along with the, the, the current monthly chart. Do you think the table <coughs> is something that we could keep updated on the website? The, uh, the flow table or the rain? The, the, the flow and rain. I don't see why not. It's, it's, it's a good idea. That way, anybody can chart it any way they want, and if somebody comes up with a better way to do it, Actually, they can, great they can do the work and show you how. Sure. Right? No, that's, that's actually, we can do that. Good idea. That's a little bit of monthly staff time. But, yeah. but you got to pre prepare it for this anyway. It's just hand it to the consultant, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's a, it should be just a, a CSV file or an Excel file. Well, the, the, the five year view actually it runs from current to I just want to take those backwards in time. I just want the table. Uh, the graphing, I would leave as an exercise to the reader. Uh, I, I, I think the graph makes it a lot easier to understand at a glance. Yeah. Well, the point of the table is so people can make their own graphs. Yeah, I like that idea. Well, for those of you who are good at it, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to get good as to try it. Well, we will get the monthly graph, and then we will also have it. Director, yeah, if, yeah. if you want the raw data, I would be more than happy to I, study I, the file. I would, I would very much like the raw data. Yeah, I like raw data. Probably ask that the raw data be just left on the web and not stuck in as part of the no. packets. We don't need it in the packets. Okay. I would just like rain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we could get the data. Thank you. Rob, any further comments on your report? No, I have some questions on some of the items. Mr. Leonard. Just hold back here. Okay, in uh, one of the first and second pages of the report, uh, item six uh, regarding the leak that was a, a, a MWSD water main says SAM response costs related to the initial call out when the leak was believed to be sewer related will be absorbed by SAM. Is that really standard practice? I don't know whether I'd call it a standard practice, but what 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 what's, what happened in this instance was there was an unidentified uh, a ten or a twelve inch water main that was directly perpendicular to our force main, and it sprung a leak right underneath our force main. Uh, Montero's staff came out and they tested the water, and they said, "Well, there's no residual chlorine in this," and so the natural mm -hmm. next assumption was that it's sewer. Well, one of the things that happens when you test for residual chlorine in the water, because the residual is typically very low, it can be consumed by the organics in the soil. So, but anyway, what, what it has, we had a, a, a moment where we had a potential sewer leak right next to the highway. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what are we going to do if we have to open this up and evacuate the line and, and, and do it in as rapid a point of uh, 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 way as possible and minimize any kind of fines we would have from from a discharge, and that was to get some two vacuum trucks to go out there while they dug this up and identified what it was, and that 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 cost is for the standby time that uh, when I sent those trucks out there at, 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 in anticipation of this was likely a force main leak because there was no identified water main in the area. It just turned that that was a new discovery for it in Montero Water uh, Sanitary, and so. Uh, I had some discussions with Clemens, and uh, his, his thought was that since you know, Sam didn't really ask them whether they were willing to absorb the standby time for two vacuum trucks, and I assumed that it was a sewer leak because by all evidence that we had, at least at the moment, I, uh, rather than get into a negotiation about who pays for what, I wanted to deal with controlling the event first and then set about hashing out the response. Now, in, in uh, Montero is still going to be picking up part of the vacuum truck expense because on the second day, it turns out they needed a vacuum truck out there to dewater their hole while they affected their repair on their line. So one of those call-out trucks, they're going to absorb. So there was three different bills. So there's one for the two trucks we called out and then one for a truck the following day. And so uh, my desire would be to, in fairness to Montero, that Sam absorbs that, and then if it, ultimately that's my judgment call as a manager. Is I, I take something like that very seriously, and when it's right next to the main thoroughfare and it's about two hours outside of rush hour, I want to get on it and get some things staged as rapidly as possible. And 99 times out of 100, I would have I would have laid money on this being a sewer leak, but there was that unidentified 
large vein leaking in just the wrong, wrong place. I'm, I'm not questioning the decision. Your decision was fine. I'm just questioning why we're absorbing the cost of that. I, I, I agree. I think Rob um, did, did the right thing. He, uh, he Sam responded to a, a possible leak, as it should do, and I'm not disagreeing hey, Wait, wait, with wait, that. wait. Sam responded to a leak, a possible leak, it seemed to be a sewer leak, and then Monterra MWSD paid for the follow-through on the leak, uh, paid for the, for the second day. Uh, so, you know, we, we would know it, Rob couldn't know for sure, but, but it seemed to be a sewer leak, so Sam responded appropriately. And then when it was determined to be a water leak from Monterra, Monterra picked up the charge after that. How, how much money are we talking about here? $9,000. I, I really have a problem with Sam picking that up. You know, I, I, I really think that was a wise move. It doesn't cost, it pays. When you're looking at potential hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines, $9,000, I think, uh, Mr. Warren, is a worthwhile investment to take that risk. And I, I totally support Sam picking up the expense. Well, again, I'm not questioning the action I'm, or the decision. I'm fine with the, with the actions that were taken. I just have a problem with us eating the cost. Okay. I can Brian. tell you, if it was a wastewater leak, you would be looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential. I'm not disagreeing with that. Well, then, what's the problem with a nine thousand dollar insurance because it policy? Wasn't our problem. I think uh, insurance. Right, I, I think that what Rob was getting at, and I'll tell me if I'm restating this fairly, and but I don't care which way it goes. Montero is grateful for Sam's fast response and smart response, and if it comes to you know Montero, so be it. Uh, that's I'm fine with that because um, it would have been our cost at some you know, and it was at some point so but I think Rob what you were saying was since you incurred cost without without running it past somebody who you might eventually pass the cost on to you're thinking since I didn't talk to Clemens before I ordered the truck it's not fair to try to stick in with that bill is that what you're saying to a certain extent yes and it's and it, if, if it turns out my thinking is off base on that I but I wanted to put that out there is there's there's a nine thousand dollar hit and it, with all due respect, when it comes up to something like that, I'm going to act on it and then ask for permission later, and then I'll let the chips fall where they may when it comes to this kind of expense. Because there, there, if there were places, and when, when, one of the discussions I had with Clemens was, if, if, had we known it was a water leak, we wouldn't have reacted quite so in a meth, meth, uh, oh, quite in such an emergency manner. But I didn't have the the luxury of that right. choice. There are method. Uh, uh, one of the things uh, uh, Tim was telling me about is uh, since the, the water is fluoridated, you can I believe the water around here is fluoridated. You can Carbon. test for you can test for fluoride, and that's we don't we don't know. Yeah, they check. They don't they, they don't, they don't, they don't fluoridate. fluoridate. Okay. No, they don't. So, but, but uh, that's something other agencies do. And since I'm not I wasn't familiar with it, I'd never thought of it. But no, I mean I'm. I, I'm, I'm grateful. Let, I'm let, let me be real clear. I'm grateful Sam responded in the way it did. I hope it was a good uh, exercise for our team. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for the, for the cross-agency collaboration. I heard from Clemens as well about how well it went. And it seemed to be uh, a good joint exercise. Uh, it's unfortunate that it happened, but it does happen. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with it going either way, but uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the decisions you made on that. I get to recognize myself. Um, I'll be voting on Half Moon Bay, so let's that's a majority, so I think it's okay. I'm just going to do that. Then I have one request, which is that Sam ask um, CCWD and MWSD to send us um, precision maps of where their facilities are so that in the future when something like this happens, you look at that map and you say, oh, this may or may not this, be our problem. This main was not identified until they found it leaked. They didn't know it was there either. So it was not, it was not something that it's having a separate it issue. would, would it be. Okay, well, it's not so a you, 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 you look at the history of how we wound up that water system, and it's amazing that we got any records at all. They were actually, when I went in the day that I went in to pick up the keys, we wrote them an $11 million check. They were running the shredders full speed? <laughs> no, they were packing up boxes and hauling stuff off. So that we have something that's undocumented, I'm, I'm glad we found it. <laughs>
Don't don't feel bad. It's not at all. I don't good. feel bad. We're so happy to have that in public hands. No, I think good. I think in simple terms, you could look at newer equipment to test for chlorinated sure. water. Is so. that true, Mr. Almost Engineer? <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, do you have uh, do you have other questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, on uh, item 12 regarding the pump and motor repair costs. Um, I had thought that I asked, maybe I didn't, for this uh, uh, data to include when were each of these pumps last replaced um, or maybe substantially rebuilt. But uh, it, it, it's kind of my impression that the pumps at Portola were replaced a, a relatively small number of years ago. And so I was 10 years. Well, given the lifetime of the pump, 10 years is not that long, and so I'm kind of concerned about the escalating repair costs. And one, one way or another, Sam needs to get a handle on, on this and control these costs, and if that means replacing the pumps to, to stop spending increasing amounts of money on repairs, then we need to look at that. And Director Warren, one thing I did, I went through our, uh, or we went through our, uh, uh, our QuickBooks software basically looking for these cost centers so I could identify some of these things out quickly. If we want to drill down into the individual pumps, we can do that, I think. But I might have to start pulling apart some of the records and going back into details to build this for play, build the history up. And that's well, not something that I did at this point, but we could probably. Okay, let, let me ask you to just start by, um, you know, for each pump, uh, showing when that pump was last replaced. Well, we could find that data. That's, uh, that should be. It's just a matter Reasonably easy to turn up, I hope. Okay. So I think that's all I have marked. Yep. Any further comments on the manager's report? <coughs> okay. The table here was really small. Too bad. Uh, so on to the uh, attorney's report. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, two things. One on the agenda, but before that, is uh, going back to the. Uh, the Keyhole water course. After the last meeting, one of the directors wanted to know where our property, where the exact boundaries of the property were. So I went back and through the help of a search group that goes down and reads these records at the San Mateo County uh, Recorder's Office. We have the original deed, and I've given us all this information. But it's going to be helpful to get started on this water course. Mm -hmm. The original conveyance that where we acquired the property at uh, Sam the Langster family. That was in 01. And then in that conveyance, which he has, there was an exception for the property conveyed to the city of Half Moon Bay back in 1960. So we had to go back and get that exception because you have this overall conveyance subject to this exception. So we got that one pinned down. So you're and saying in the rectangle part of that was it's actually... A, the rectangle was a mis... It, uh, this, these, this description goes back to chains. And as a lawyer, I mean, we didn't, this was even before my time as a lawyer talking about chains wow. rather than feet <laughs> in yards. So it's a beautiful, it's just fun as a lawyer to read this whole description. But you got to find it out there in the, in the field, and that's the problem. And, it, and, you know, it's not a half mile this way, take a left, and a, you know, quarter mile back. It's in the end. So we got to pin it down. Well, the, the meets and bounds of this property refers to Spanish town. Yes, yes. And then the third document, which you were able to find, was there was a record of survey done fairly recently, about three, three, four years ago. Eight. Eight. So between those three documents, it goes back to your question. We've got to start. For, what do we? What is it? What do we have out there? And where is it in the field? Mm -hmm. And this should help a surveyor or whoever's going to get involved to show you where it is and where, what's our property, what's their property, where this. So hopefully that's a start up. So the other thing which is on the agenda is the attorneys committee at CASA, and I've sent you a report, and let me just briefly go through that. The first item on there is a bill that was, it's a 110-page bill, it's the budget bill, but buried in this bill is a requirement that all public works con uh, contractors now, that the, uh, that the contractors themselves be registered with the register. So this is going to be something that we need to get in our bid documents for our projects. 
because we will get, we must uh, work with registered uh, public works contractors and subcontractors. So, uh, Rob, when you're talking to uh, your engineer, make sure that, and I tried to be detailed so they, they can look at these sections and, and work it into their documents. But it's, that's just a heads up for the rest of you. Yeah? Yeah. Can, I, can I ask you about SB 119 and, and your report, it's item 2B? I'm getting it. Yeah, I'm going oh. step by step. Like too far ahead. Yeah. As I, I'm on SB oh. 854. Oh, okay. Okay, and then the, the second one is, and this is really, uh, I thought about Montero on this one. There is a new uh, legislation here that there's a shutoff notice requirement for special districts on residential properties. Cities already have this, so you want to shut off. Uh, use uh, uh, residential users. There's a process which Tony down there hopefully has gotten in place and you're following that. This is though for, for uh, Montera uh, uh, and, and Granada uh, to just be sensitive to, to this one which is the AB 2747. Now then over to the legislation which is proposed. There is continual efforts to see whether or not you could amend Proposition 218 to bring stormwater fees into the con in consistent with water and sewer fees, where you have noticed hearing rather than a required election. So, to, so they currently require election. Yeah, stormwater. And so there's there, there's been a desire to see if we could, and I I, I think I'd be willing to bet on this and try to amend 218, but. Uh, there is a desire, and there's more and more of a problem. Where does the revenue come from to take care of storm drain problems? And they're not insignificant problems. So the question is a revenue source. And uh, consistent with that is there is a continual discussion of we ought to be able to have lifeline rates in a Proposition 218 rate structure. Lifeline rates are for senior citizens or whatever you want. And the problem with that is if you give a lifeline rate to somebody, you're actually increasing everybody else's rate. <coughs> so we could spend the rest of the night debating that. I don't think this is going to go very far, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention that people are talking about it. So you, when you say not go very far, are you talking about the, the stormwater part or the lifeline part or the whole thing? Both. Yeah. I, I just, once you start, I mean, 218 is, that's the holy grail. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be tough to deal with. Now, uh, then Leonard, here's the subsurface installations. Historically, this is proposed legislation. Historically, you know, there's the, the notice requirement uh, for all subsurface installations. An exception to that is non-pressurized facilities. So, for example, your gravity sewers are all exempt from the, uh, the uh, notice requirements. This is going to. This proposes to eliminate that exemption. So, what what type of notification is through the uh, what's it called? Well, you to, Tim, do you know where you give notice? Do you know the USA? US US Underground a Service Alert. Is yeah. Okay. Um, is this only for installation of new pressurized lines? No, it would be. Or I think it would be across for anything. But. I can't. I better not, I better be careful on that. This is just proposed. I'm not sure this is going to go anywhere anyhow. So, but anyway, I think I better be careful on saying it's only for new. But that would make it makes sense to be for new. To go back and do it for existing would be. Is this some, somehow tied to the uh, the pipeline stuff up in uh, San Bruno? San Bruno. It could be because Jerry is the really on a, bill. He's a, he's on a rampage against PG&E. Yeah. You know, I totally support him on that. Yeah. yeah, just to bring it, this is a proposal just to let them know what's going on out there. Okay. Again, under C and D, the whole concept of microbeads and flushable wipes are hot issues. Difficult getting consensus on them, but they're out there being explored, can, can, and there's going to be some movement. Can, uh, can we have an agenda item to consider supporting those two? That's fine. Yes. Why don't we, uh, maybe Mr. Chairman, let's get, when they get they introduce a bill, then we can jump. It would seem to me that's the time to. to so if it, oh, it doesn't have a number. Okay. No, these are both, seeing microbeads and flushable wipes, this is, 
legislation being discussed that hasn't been introduced. The deadline for introducing is next Friday. I mean, this coming Friday, the 27th. So until it has a number, you don't think there's anything we can do to support it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. There's no bill yet. To yeah, there's no bill. To no. So when, when there is, I would definitely like this board to consider a resolution yep. supporting yep. it. I'd like to see us use flushable in quotes on all of these. <laughs> well, it's, a fact, it's a fact it's a that they're flushable. They're flush, <laughs> yeah. flushable and dissolved. You, can, you can get them down the toilet. That doesn't mean they go to the shot. The next yeah, item is one we, we we've, just, too. Uh, we've discussed here, which was the litigation with respect to private uh, electronic communications between public officials. That's the San Jose case. And the, the local court said that's public data. And you guys have to bring your cell phones in here so we can check it all out. The appellate court has said, no, that's not public data. This has now been, and I wanted to report, this has been accepted for appeal to the Supreme, to the state, California Supreme Court. And that that's interesting. Wow. So we'll see what happens there. CAS is obviously involved. If I'm, it would seem to me that even though I would totally oppose having to turn over a device for somebody to rummage through it. On the other hand, it seems to me that it is a proper Public Records Act request to say, give me all agency-related communications that are on your private device. Been there, done that, okay? I had to go through my email and turn over stuff. But they didn't say, bring in your computer so we can look through it. Yeah, that's a, this, is a, this is obviously a hot item. And whichever way it goes is going to be a hot item. So, and then the other one I just wanted to mention, the, pub, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, well, that's the Supreme Court one. And the last one is just FPPC. And this, again, is for your board, all you elected officials, down at your member agency level. When you're getting into dealing with property and approval of property, there are FPPC rules on what you can vote on and what you cannot participate in. You know, how far are you from the property? And if so, you have to abstain. And that's just a heads up for you. And that concludes my presentation. Okay. Uh, item number eight, director's reports. Anybody done anything fun or interesting? Had this great meeting with Director Kowalczyk and our general manager at 8 a.m. Uh, one morning recently. Uh, I'd like to report that, yes, Half Bay does appear to exist at 8 a.m. It's a rare opportunity for me to find out that early. I guess you guys aren't morning people. I'm not, uh, really, not really morning people. Uh, I tend to be a very Debbie and I go to Oakland at 5 in the morning. Who cares? Right? Uh, get up the traffic. I guess I'm just whining. I beat the traffic. <laughs> morning. Is there any uh, further public comment or other communications? Um, how do we want to run the adjournment with the closed session? Uh, or, uh, I want to go back and read this. Well, before we do that, I just, do we have to adjourn a public meeting before we know? Well, close and I just move to a, move to closed session. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Leonard, you had a question on the minutes before? Um, yeah, I have uh, underlined something. This is sign in item B on page four of the minutes. Um, I don't think that what's reflected in here is precisely the motion that I made, um, which was to. Uh, what, what it states here is to refund um, excess operating revenue uh, in accordance with each agency's percentage of the operating budget. No, that would not have been my motion. My motion would have been percentage paid. And so the, the refund has to be computed that way and the minutes have to be corrected. They, that to me is a good, 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 good. Susie, can't stand. Yes. So I, I move that we uh, uh, approve the minutes with that correction. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Sorry. It's a sort of a bad at you. <laughs> okay, well, we will recess the meeting then to uh, close session. Or the items as stated on the agenda. Or the items. Did you there? I'm going to announce them.